לא, עדי אתה בלייב? סבבה בפיתה. סבבה. בפיתה. לא קומפליקטי. זה קומפליקטי לי. כן. אז היום אני חושב שאני יכול לשתף עם אתכם קצת את הקונטנט. אני אעשה לכם מאוד 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 אינטרדקציה על מה שאני חושב שזה מאוד פשוט. ואני אעשה לכם שאלה לכל אחד שלכם. והשאלה השלישית היא שאלה של שיפור ומשפטים של המדינה. It's uh, some of my ideas and thoughts, um, and I will show you, make a demo, how we source from 1688. Because 1688 is the number one source for, you know, all the art sellers, all the art sellers. They find 20 products, uh, you know, from 1688 for their art express store. So if you are selling, you know, to different countries on Shopify, I think, uh, try to learn how to source from 1688 will be you know, benefit for you to find the next winner. Uh, but since we don't have too much time, I might do a very simple demo. So you have a general idea, and I will send you a link, which I, you know, I have done before uh, on the YouTube. So when you have time, you can, you can watch it. Yeah, you can watch it, yeah, yeah. And the fourth part is uh, what we can do for you. And Uh, and we will have uh, some time for the next, uh, for the last part is open you know questions and discussions if you have, if you have any questions as long as I know I will answer okay okay so this is uh, our you know this content so this this was me uh, I graduated from college in 2007 and before I graduated I have been you know have been a teacher. I was an English teacher for almost one year, and after you know being a teacher in China, I feel like that I cannot earn you know too much money. So I think uh, I I would I go to EU. EU is um, is a you know is a trading is a heaven for trading. It's a heaven for trading because there are many you know thousands of shops, thousands of booths, and thousands of. Uh, I would say factories, small factories. So this is uh, this this picture was taken on 2007. I was checking the quality. This is for a Germany, a German uh, you know customer, German customer. So the the work I do is we receive all the different products and I check all the quality and write all everything. If the quality is not okay, send them back, send them back to the factory. So uh, because this is a This is my first time, my first work after you know being a teacher. So uh, how to say the it should be um, like quality controller QA or QA, 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 QC, QC, yeah, something QC. like this. So I have a very strict you know the sense of I, I have been you know dealing with all kinds of uh, products. So this is my first first job, and I quite uh, I learned quite a lot from the first experience. And I, ha I, I have two websites, uh, nichesources.com and nichedropshipping.com. Uh, nichesources.com is mainly for Amazon seller, Amazon. So the service is like, uh, you know, shipping product from China directly to FBA with all the label, track and label, yeah. Niche dropshipping is for, is for all the dropshipping sellers because uh, in our, you know, in the process I found 
most of the Shopify sellers they have an Amazon, and most of most of the Amazon seller they have a Shopify store. So, yeah. Okay, this is a very brief introduction about myself. So this picture, this is this is a place I live. I live very nearby, about uh, ten or fifteen minutes by car. Ten or fifteen minutes by car. So this is the EU international market. On this market, you can see, you know, this is just a freeze one. So there are totally five districts. Five districts. This is just a uh, just a district. Uh, this is the first one. There is totally five freeze. Freeze means this market was built in different time, in different time. So this is the very beginning of the market. From here to here, it's about six floor, six floor, and totally I think 70, 70, 70, booths. If <coughs> you if you've never been there. You cannot imagine how big it is. From picture, it's oh, it's it's small, but you, but even me, for the first uh, two years when I go into the market, I always got lost. You know, <laughs> yeah, two years, first two years, I always got lost. So, this is a south gate, this is the north gate, and um, you know, from here and here and here. All of them are the international market. So, um, make a very simple, you know, example. Everything you can see in your room, in your family. I can say ninety, or oh, at least seven or sixty percent of the products are come from here. Seventy percent. For example, the uh, this, this, and this cup and the paper and the glass and the bottle uh, even the seat some of, I think some, some very high quality seats may be made in Israel or, but most of the items you can see in your room the plates, the, uh, the kitchenware are from you are from you so in every uh, this is a very specialized market very specialized market um, uh, this part is artificial flowers. When you enter the first floor, it's uh, all of them are artificial flowers. All kinds of them. You can buy it at a very you know low MOQ, for example, like 200 pieces or 100 pieces, as long as they have stock. If they have stock, they are willing to sell you maybe one carton. The MOQ is one carton. One carton is like um, let's say it's maybe 20 or 100 pieces. 20 to 100 pieces. It, 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 it's all different. It's based on the water, whether it's big or not. So this is the market. This is why, for us, it's very easy to find all kinds of products because it's not like like in Israel. Yeah, in Israel there are factories, but I think it's not as many as in China. So sourcing of products is very easy. And where's the patent? In EU. 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 Why? Why? Yeah, it's a it's a small city. Yeah, it's a small city. Y I W U. You wait, wait. Chinese speak means. It's very famous because of this. Yeah, yeah. So you can search some YouTube channels about EU market. You will find you know lots of information, lots of information about EU market. Okay. It's near Shenzhen. Sorry, it's near Shenzhen or it's. No, it's about one one thousand and five hundred kilometers from. Two hours by train yeah. from Shanghai. Yeah. 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 Sorry? Should we, can I ask or should we wait for the end of the presentation? Oh, if you have any questions, I'm gonna, oh, yeah, you can ask. Yeah. So, you, is that the place, is that like a marketplace mm -hmm. where all the sellers or agents are uh, the showing the products? The, or where uh, is all the, uh, the factories? Uh, the factories are also in the EU or is it just the place where uh, the trading goes on? Okay, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. It's a very good question. Okay, in the market, in the market, there are resellers yes. and manufacturers. Uh, for typical uh, for typical EU uh, EU booths, it's like uh, they have a booth 
here, and they have a factory, you know, maybe 10 kilometers away from this place. Yeah, so it's combined. There are resellers and there are manufacturers. So you have to, you know, you have to look and ask and to see all the presentations of their product to identify if they are manufacturer or reseller. Uh, for me, it's very simple. Uh, the first thing we ask them is, uh, uh, we, we ask them name of product. Name of product. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's uh, maybe a little bit difficult for you because all of them are re written in Chinese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they have a, fa a address, a address, it's a factory address, we can see that. You know, they are, uh, I, I cannot say 100%, but they are probably a factory. This is the fourth thing we ask the name card for, from them. And the second one is we look at the presentation of their products. If a factory, they don't present, you know, too many different categories. They present a simple, you know, maybe a simple line, very similar product. Maybe all of them are like this glass, glass bottles or glass, glass cups. So they present uh, similar products and some other products. We can see, oh, this is uh, their major industry. And we can ask some, uh, ask some questions. Yeah, so from the name card and the presentation, we can know whether if they are factory. Yeah. So one of the sellers from AliExpress, I mean, go to this place and just see trendy products and if they decide to have it in their store in AliExpress, so they just buy in bulk from this uh, manufacturer? Uh, okay, good question. I have many friends, they sell on AliExpress, okay. which I don't do that. I don't, I don't sell on AliExpress. <coughs> uh, most of the sellers, you know, AliExpress was, um, was started, I think, in the year 2009 or 2008. So in the very beginning, it's a C2C platform, means consumer to consumer. So at the very beginning, anyone, they can sell any products. There is no category eliminations. No category eliminations. Now the uh, AliExpress have category eliminations. You can sell only a specified you know, category or a brand uh, on Express. So they can go to the market, maybe they buy 10 pieces, they buy 10 pieces because they don't sell at one piece uh, the market, they don't sell at one piece only for samples, but you need a, a higher price for samples. They can, you can buy 10 pieces and you get the 10 pieces, go back home and take pictures and you upload on Express. Yeah, this is a very early stage, but now there are still a lot of people who trying to sell, you know, the starter, starters trying to sell on Express. They are also doing the same way. They buy small quantity and they sell on Express. Yeah. Of course, they are also, I, I think from the year 20, uh, 2012, 2012 or 2015, I, I, 2015 something, on Express requires all the sellers on Express must be a, must, you know, require a business license. Small business, small business. Okay. 
uh, because AliExpress uh, it's the it's uh, the business the business model is like eBay. Like eBay, how AliExpress is to start get started with like eBay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Regarding so today, um, like small business can sell on AliExpress only brands. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a brand, the brand is you. You have a you know trademark, which is uh, registered in the USA or in China. If you don't have this, you can't. You've got to have a trademark, but if you have a trademark, you can sell them. You have the business license and you have the trademark. So you've got to have Chinese uh, business license and then you can send on AliExpress. Uh, two uh, requirements. The first one is you are a business, you have a business license and you have a trademark. Okay. The trademark should be a Chinese, uh, Chinese trademark, it should be a US trademark. Yeah. Okay. So the next question we are going to discuss is what are the common issues that hurt your dropshipping business or more hurt your customer experiences? Anyone? Shipping time. Shipping time. Shipping time. Different time. One day. Quality. Yeah. Returns. Returns. Return mainly, I think it was quality, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But also the return system. How to bring it back? Size. Inventory. Size. Inventory. Inventory. No, inventory. Inventory. Uh, what do you mean by inventory? Uh, quantity. For quantity. example, if something is uh, running very good, sometimes it's. You start an out of stock. Yeah, out of stock. Okay, Finally. out of stock. Yeah. Chinese holidays. <laughs> Chinese holidays. Oh, especially the yeah. Chinese CNY, right? Chinese yeah. New Year. Yeah. 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 And it lasts about 20 days. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, That's it. Yeah. <coughs> Competition. Competition. I mean, uh, if you source your products on AliExpress, yeah. your competition is unlimited because anyone yeah. can find... Anyone products. can find the same products. Exactly. And, yeah. uh, that gives you a lot of competition. And, uh, and, uh, you know, but I was telling you that uh, looking at other Chinese website that has uh, had uh, more items, different items. Yeah. That uh, it's very hard to compete. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. So everyone get the same products from same place and even same price. And the yeah. same models. Yeah. 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 Same pictures. Yeah. Same pictures. Same, same pictures. models. Yeah. Same, same shape. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have made some, you know, made some, how to say, analysis. Yeah, analysis. The common issues that hurt your customer experience or dropshipping, you know, issues. Uh, the first one is out of uh, out of inventory. For example, uh, you know, there is a life, um, how to say, life circle for each product. Maybe in the very early stage, very few people know it, very people sell it. And then gradually, the how to say, in the yeah, and uh, the yeah, the peak. yeah, and gradually, many people knows it, but some people sell very good, some people maybe they don't. <coughs> gradually, become become high peak. Everyone knows it, everyone sell it, and gradually it becomes the late majority. Everyone knows it, and everyone trying to sell it. And price goes down, profits go, profits go. So I think every product, they have a left circle like this. Yeah. So, uh, out of the inventory for uh, issue is going, it, it might go like this. At the very beginning, at the very beginning, you find a winner, and maybe very few people know you can make it perfect, and you sell it very well, but suddenly it might be you know, February to you out out of stock. Because they never imagined this can be sold so good, they are now prepared. Yeah, this is a very common issue. And the second one, the second issue is when many people sell the same product, it sells very good, and they they need to you know give you some order, give them some order, and give other customer order. They don't want to lose any order. So they they just split order to different seller, to different customers, like drop shippers. I mean, right? So that makes you you know out of stock, and then they need need time, you know, to buy materials, to organize the production, 
and then you know the time it takes about if uh, 15 days or 30 days. So yeah, nearly one month. Yeah. So the out of inventory issue is the biggest issue that affects customer issues. If you uh, if your customer have paid the bill and they don't get the products, maybe your people you know, have a lot of issues. So this is big, one of the biggest issues. That that yeah. The second one is long process time and long shipping time. Long process time is like this. When I have the order, actually I don't have any inventory, right? So I buy from the shop or I buy from the 1688 sellers and they will take two or three days to ship to us and then we pack and ship. So most of the AliExpress sellers, they don't have you know, much, um, how to say, they don't have too many you know, capital money or something, they do it like this. They do it like this. So there is a long process time. They tell you... So that now the impact has become very long. It was uh, 14 to 20, now they 25, one month. Yeah, that looks close to the business. Because the bottom... Uh, but the last. It's, it's a cost of a thing. 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 If someone tells you the impact might take longer, it's not because impact is longer, it's because of processing time. We should say dropshipping, the kids will. Yeah, 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 drop shipping. Yeah, 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 yeah. AliExpress, yeah. can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so, so we have a lot of AliExpress. It's a drop shipping. We, 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 to source from like same product from more than one, uh, you say you got seventy thousand uh, shops. Probably they're not each selling one specific item. So if you're there, you can source from more than one shop for same item. You see, it's getting uh, high volume. Uh, sorry, can I say it again? I don't fully get understood. You say main problem? Yeah. Out of inventory. Yeah. Out of, of inventory when you're not in China and you're not in the center of 70,000 stores. You know one seller, maybe two. But in your location over there, maybe you can source same item, you know. Yeah. Same item. More, from more people yeah. uh, uh, making. Yeah. yeah. This is one. This is one technique. Yeah, but, but most of the time it's one factory. Yeah, but you know, there is a risk to use this, uh, you know, to use this way to source products. Because different, uh, if different centers, they, uh, they buy from one factory, that's fine. The quality are similar. But if different factories produce the same product, that may result in different quality. That may result in different quality. So, the solution for out of inventory, uh, I think I will uh, explain you how to you know how to solve this problem uh, later. Yeah, because uh, you cannot. I mean, every product they need time to produce. You cannot uh, make a product in one or two days if there is no ready product, no ready material. You cannot change it. Right? So every product needs a bit time to be produced. So the best way is to manage, I mean, uh, this is what I'm going to talk about, it's just, uh, to manage your supply chain. Manage your supply chain. It means that you should have a very clear understanding about how much inventory you currently have and how much you know you're going to sell today or tomorrow or next week, you have an idea about this. Once your sales is, maybe your sales is more than the, you know, inventory,
you should do something to make it not happen. We are not God. We are we are human beings. We cannot change, you know, the inventory. There is no inventory, but we make 100 pieces or 200 pieces yes. inventory. Only for custom products. It's not uh, for stock products. Uh, stock and custom customization products both the same. So you yeah. have to take in mind also the production for the stock products. Even stock production. products. Yes. Okay. If you want your business running longer and safe, you need to pay attention to this, or you need have someone to look into this for you. Like, you <coughs> like creating a buffer? Buffer? Like, uh, if I have, I, I don't know, like five products in my store, for example, mm -hmm. yeah. then I buy some stock yeah. that will belong to me yeah. to get ready for this kind of uh, situation. Uh -huh. That's what you mean? You buy, uh, you, you mean buy stock? Yeah. That helps. Okay. Yeah, that helps. Uh, okay. It from the very beginning, from the very beginning, if you don't have, you know, record order every day, you can drop from from Aliexpress, I think. If you have, you know, regular orders every day, for example, like 10 or 20 or even more, you can prepare. I mean, we can help you to prepare the inventory. But the problem is, you don't want to spend money on the inventory, right? And, and we don't know if it will be sell. Be sell yeah? Yes, that's it's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, that's why we have a chance to discuss the solutions. So you are standing in the position of a customer. You don't want, you know, the inventory. We are standing in the in the position of an agent or you know dropshipping supplier, because I was. I mean, we are doing this business. So there is a solutions. There is compromisations. If everyone wants to, you know, develop your business in a safe way, it's not. I mean, we cannot develop our business by luck. Yeah. So I will uh, I will uh, offer my solutions later. But, but, yeah. but you talk about dropshipping only because if you have a specially uh, product that you are designed the, the product, no, we don't. Yeah. You, you don't have any choice. You need the uh, yeah. minimum MOQ yeah. and you need uh, to invest and to pay money for inventory if you don't yeah. want to, to to stop. Yeah, that's so it. So it's different. Yeah, it's different. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in my opinion. No, yeah, in my opinion, I think the dropshipper, um, dropshipping is just a different way of sell your products. Just imagine maybe uh, maybe 20 years ago, um, we are without internet, and we want to build a brand. What do we do? We need also find a factory and you know get our products sent to the you know send real products to different you know places or different sellers and ask them to sell our products. It takes even longer, maybe 20 or 30 years, to build a brand. But in the internet uh, time, maybe we, we spend three or five years, we can build a brand. Every, everyone can know. Like movement, right? The watch. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the watch. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is an opportunity that our time gives us. We can build a brand even you know, shorter than those strong brands they are already existing. So. For the design or customization, I think this is a this is something you must do when you grow bigger. When you grow big, you might have designers, right? Maybe it's not full time designer, maybe it's part time designer. He will design for you, and you know this this is going to sell well, right? So you design just you you design, but we can find a factory to you know to make it, to make it yeah to hold the inventory. In EU, in Shenzhen, in USA, so you can keep selling. So if you want to always, you know, rely on the existing stocks, existing products, uh, I think you can make some money. But there is a still long way, to, you know, to grow big. Yeah, to grow big. But what I believe is, uh, all the big brands, they are start from very small. They are very little, but maybe one or two, you know, friends get together and gradually, gradually. Yeah, the, this is what I believe. So in the future, if you want to build your own brand, you have to be innovative to build your brand, to build your product, to design it, to feel how you, you know, for example, I clothes. You need to feel it, how I wear, I like it. So this is something, you know, even deeper in the future. So if always relying on the Chinese uh, factories, uh, 
I think, yeah, it's okay for from the very beginning. But when you have more capital, you have more audience, you can understand your customer more clearly. Just like I come here, I'm trying to understand you. I, so you can understand your audience, your customer, and what they are thinking and how to build your brand and your product. This is what, what I think and some of my experience, uh, I mean my, my understanding. So uh, this is a out of inventory. And the next one is long process time and long shipping time. So uh, regarding to the long shipping time, there are two times, two times in the Q4. In the Q4. So if you are using ePacket, no one can guarantee you the delivery time. This this is the truth. Okay. So if if we are if you are my customer and you tell me I want a packet and deliver it in twenty five days in Q four, I cannot guarantee you. Because because you know, e packet is a brand of you know by USPS and China Post. And do you know how crazy it is before and in Q four? Mm -hmm. All the packages, the China Post, they, they don't have, they don't even, you know, every day they, by trucks, you know, by trucks sent to the post office, the post office day and night, day and night. You know, the, uh, to my uh, understanding, the Chinese people, they are hardworking. Even from the 6 in the morning till maybe, <coughs> maybe 9 o'clock or even longer. To me, it's no problem, it's not a big, it's not a big deal, right? But there are still a lot of packages because you get a lot of orders. And uh, for the Western, you know, in the Western culture, before Christmas, it's the biggest season. So a lot of orders, you know, all of them are going to the USA. So what is the best option? The best option, I think, yeah, the best option, I think there are two. The first one is uh, ship from China by a Express or air, you know, by air or express, yeah, to the USA yeah, warehouse, and you put on the USPS label. So when, when you know, when the package is picked up, your customer will see, okay, this is picked up, it's from the USA. USA. Yeah, but it costs a lot of money to, to do, if I want to do it like one by one. Like it costs a little bit, it costs a little bit. For example, like 200 grams, uh, EPAC is about four point, I, I don't know exactly, maybe yeah. about four. Yeah. Yeah, but for USPS, if you use our, you know, shipping, it's about, I think, less than one US dollar, I think. Less than? Less than, you, you, yeah, extra. So you can deliver, you can deliver, you can yeah. deliver yeah. 200 gram like, like five point five dollar to USA? Uh, almost, uh, and uh, for uh, like 200 grams. And you ship one by one? Yeah, one by one. Really? Yeah. What's the price? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I think it's a very good price. Yeah, but I need. Uh, I, I think you can. I have a new link. You can check it. You deliver it to the customer, right? Not to the warehouse. No. Yeah. The warehouse. No. The warehouse. To the customer. To the customer. My warehouse. Okay. Let me explain. Yeah. Let me explain. 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 אנחנו משתמשים בה. שולחים, עושים בלק של הזמנות, קיבלת עכשיו ביום ראשון 50 הזמנות, סטנלי מארגן אותם, לוקח לו יומיים שלושה לעשות את הפרוסס, ביום שלישי הוא ישלח את כל הבלק הזה שקיבלת ביום ראשון, ל-Warehouse, אוקיי? ומה-Warehouse פותחים את הפקאג', זאת אומרת כבר אצלו בפרוסס הוא שם את המדבקות של USPS בסין, אתה מקבל כבר את הטראקינג נאמבר ביום שלישי, עוד לא מכניס את זה ללקוחות, אוקיי? לא שולח את זה ללקוחות. יש בערך שלושה ימים או ארבעה ימים מהרגע שהוא שולח את זה ל-Warehouse עד שזה מגיע לשם, okay. שם פותחים את הקופסה ומכניסים את זה לתוך המדפים של USPS וזה נשלח בתוך ארצות הברית עוד איזה יומיים ואז אתה שם את הטראקים גם על הלקוח והוא רואה משלוח מ-US. אבל מבחינת, מבחינת מחיר, מבחינת, בסופו של דבר בבית של הלקוח, כמה אני משלם יותר אם אני משתמש ב... זה בערך כמו אי-פאקט. זה אומר לך, 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 ז
What about Euro? Like Australia and all these. Uh, we, don't, we don't have uh, you know, warehouses from Europe. So if I work with you, I work only USA, yeah? Sorry? So if I want to work with you, I can do only USA, right? So if I want to deliver to Australia, this is only impacted, right? Australia and Europe. Okay, for, for product go, goes to uh, Europe. We currently we don't have a corporate warehouse or okay. our own warehouse. Okay. So we can use some special lines. They are going, for example, like 40 apps, even Express. I think you have know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, so course. it's a you know regular solution. The regular solution is regular price and regular time. Yeah. What is the so, shipping time to US? In Say if, if with USPS it's uh, four to twelve days, usually four to twelve days. Twelve days. I have a customer in Israel, and he always use USPS. He's doing jewelry. Every time, it's uh, the average time is nine days. Nine days to Israel. No, no. So the US. US. Ah. US. You can do four ninety nine yeah. and you do express yeah. shipping six ninety nine. You're gonna pay six ninety nine to customer. Yeah, and uh, that's the total of uh, five dollars. Average. Five. Uh, for 200 grams, 550. That's it. Uh, because if you ship inside the United States from a U.S. warehouse, you do not have a location in the United States. So that that can cost you another five or ten dollars for USPS, right? No, no, no. Altogether. It's, it's no, he give, he give you give you all the solution. Everything together. Yeah, yeah. But it's 200 grams. If it's more than 200 grams, it's going to cost yeah. you more. Oh. Yeah. I, I can after we finish, I can send you a link. You can check all the shipping options right? yeah. for sh shipping from China to yeah, yeah. USA. There are about 17 different shipping solutions. So you can check all the you know all the different shipping solutions, and you can evaluate whether it is okay enough for business. Yeah. And for Canada, I mean, if you want to sh if you want to send from your warehouse in USA to Canada, it will be. Faster shipping uh, instead of using the package from China to Canada. It's US, yes, yes, it's, same. It's, it's the same from China to US. It's the same like sending inside the US, Canada. So you Canada can deliver the US faster shipping. Do it for two or three days. So, so for Europe, uh, you think that the e package is the best solution, right? No, no, yeah, it's better. So it's a regular, it's, it's regular. Mm. Uh, to Europe, I think for 4 PX. Yes. Yeah, for yes, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So shipping, uh, shipping is you know it takes a long time. The main voltage. Yeah, it's a long time. It's not Ron was not built in one day, right? It takes a long time. So during this process, actually, we are also trying to find new ways to solve the shipping. You know. From China we to had e-packet uh, like two years ago. We had e-packet arrived in five days. Yeah, yeah, the packet it was very fast for us. Too many, yeah. Too many, huh? Yeah, confusion. Yeah, confusion. You know, uh, China Post, it's a national owned company. It's not, you know, private it's owned private. company. So the private private owned company, they are more innovative. They are more eager to solve the problems. Mm -hmm. But a state owned company or a national owned company, oh, so many orders. It's just like this. Yeah. So it's different, you know, kind. Maybe. Two years ago, three years ago, it's not so many owners. Two years ago, it was easy. Everything was easy. Two years yeah. ago. Yeah. So just believe this. This year is the most easiest year. If you look in the maybe five years, you you are standing in the five years ahead. And the back. This is the most easiest time ever. It's always like that. The most yeah. easy time. Yeah. So when we are looking back, it's always Something easy. Gonna get, uh, when we are looking harder, back, right? It's like property, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is multi suppliers with multi orders to customers. Uh, I think you have all been experiencing this before, right? So, customer place one order, right? They have three products, and they get this seven days later, and another maybe fourteen days later, another twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Later. yeah, this hurts your customer interest and lack of brand identity. Lack of brand identity. If you drop from AliExpress, you do, uh, making your brand or combine all the different products category together, it's uh, 
But you can, so you can buy from a, one company and change the label? Sure. Change the brand? Uh, uh, some of the uh, AliExpress seller, they offer some, they don't. Some of them, they don't have understanding about what drop shipping is. They don't have idea of drop shipping. Yeah, it depends. It depends whether your supplier understands you or not. Uh, I, I, I think I have seen a, how to say, it? I think I have seen a post in Facebook group. Uh, it says, what's the fuck? The, he posted a, you know, yeah. a, a e-package oh, yeah, yeah. picture, I, right? Yeah, 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 I am a new, I am a <laughs> Don't put a voice. voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you put everything shows that. Wow. Yeah. So it happens because because if they are not professional, I mean, job cheaper, they are trying to sell their own brand. And they just type, you know, there is an integration for job cheaper, you know, software. They just type all the, you know, everything you wrote to the seller. They don't even look at it. And, you know, the seller, they may know English. When they type everything, this, you know, this label will give someone, you know, who didn't speak English. They just know, you know, Chinese pinyin, right? So they don't know what you are saying. They just, you know, and send your orders out. So your message is nothing to them. It's nothing, okay. And lack of brand identity. You should write in Chinese. Uh, yeah, writing Chinese is a good idea, but it's right. also difficult, yeah. right? Yeah. Google, yeah. yeah. Google Translate. It's difficult. Don't send my uh, you know, Google, uh, information. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, what, 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 you know why I can't say Sababa? Yeah. Because it, it sounds like stupid dad. In Chinese, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So even you, you write Chinese because if they have maybe too many orders, they don't even care about. It. Yeah, they don't even care about. It. How do you so, say to be dead in Chinese? Shababa. Yeah. Right? Similar? Yeah. You mean don't use that word in China? And I come to China, I never use that word. But it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, the last one is, I think it's difficult to manage order flows and track them. For example, if you play by play your orders by CSV file, you cannot track them, track all of the orders. I mean, you cannot manage them in, a, in from every aspect. Mm -hmm. It's difficult because when uh, I tell you how I do the CSV file before, first of, um, you will send me the CSV file, right? And then we will convert it in a different version. In the convert, you know, convert conversion, version. yeah, there is information lack. You know, some information may be missing or something. So after the conversion finished, you will upload to a software or something. And during the update, if there is a blanket lack of information, lack of information. You know, it's not, the, the, the upload cannot be finished, cannot finish. In this way, maybe if you have 100 orders, you have to craft them for two or five times, even more. Just imagine if you have maybe 200 or 300 or even more orders to fulfill. The, I mean, the rate of uh, wrong delivery or lack of information, you know, it's very easy to happen, very easy to happen. And they just get the tracking order number and give you, you know, send you, you upload to Shopify. So sometimes you cannot track every situation, what happened to the order. So you don't even know whether this order is delivered to a customer. We don't care. Yeah, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm joking. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, th so these are the common, you know, problems, problems that might affect your dropshipping business or uh, your customer experience. Okay. So let's get started from a posting FB. Uh, have you ever seen this before? How many of you in the Econ Empire? Empire. Wow. I've never seen it, but I felt uh, yeah. myself. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, trying to get three simple answers from AliExpress Center is impossible. <laughs> I'm getting sales to 50 orders a day for one product, and I ask them for discount. Seller say, you order no pay, I make discount. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I'm Chinese. So I just, uh, you know, directly trans translate it. I know what, it, what he says. Did yeah. you pay for the order? No, no, it says, no. No, it says not complete the not order, complete wait for the yes. payment, yeah. Yeah. and then I will adjust the price. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, yeah. you order, no pay, I make this discount. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, you know, it's, they miss. Yeah, most of the art express sellers, uh, they don't speak very good English. This is an example. Uh, I asked him, I want unique link to pay and ask the same thing in many different ways without straight answer. Actually, he answered, but you know, uh, cannot understand each other. Yeah. Lost in translation. Sorry? Lost in translation. Yeah, lost in translation, yes. And uh, anyone know how is the best way to get it done? I have 80 orders back up, backed up as a result, and now he says, this term, no stock. I he said item, no stock. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, this item no stock. What the fuck? <laughs> Again, right? It takes seven days to propose my orders with the pack to USA slow. Too slow. Anyone have similar experience with Sun Express? So I think this is very common issue, yeah. especially Q4, right? Especially in Q4. Especially when you have many orders. Because to the sellers on AliExpress, if their order quantity, you know, too fast, too fast. They cannot handle it. They cannot handle. It. They need, you know, buy stuff and prepare and stuff. Yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah. So that's why this issue can be happened. Can be happened. So I was in Facebook group and I see this, uh, you know, I see this uh, post and I type blah blah blah. I introduce myself and yeah, offer myself, offer my service and. Uh, just at the time, I have a customer also in the same, you know, I would say same group, and he recommended me. We recommend Stanley, blah blah blah, yeah. And then he uh, contact me. We are in touch. Yeah. Okay. This is it. so. <clears throat> why I want to make this as an example? It's because this is a very typical issue that most of the dropshipper has experienced or you might experience it in the future. So if you have some ideas about how to manage your supply chain, it will be benefit for your business. So uh, this is a concept for supply chain management from uh, Wikipedia. I just you know, copy and paste this uh, concept. So the, uh, Actually, for the last uh, maybe eight or ten years before I start my own business, what I do is supply chain management. I do uh, for some of the big brands. Uh, the first, I mean, my first job, the customer, he was called uh, VR and PR. It's uh, two big, you know, importers in USA, and maybe in the six or seven. The six or five years, uh, I mean, my job, I deal with a customer, it's called, um, it's a German chain store. Chain store, they have for one, you know, simple trotters, simple trotters, they might have, you know, uh, let me think, we, we go with containers, for, you know, trotters. Trousers? Yeah. Pants? Yeah, pants, pants, uh, with, you know, with the, uh, pockets? No, no pockets. It's uh, for women. Simple pants. Leggings? Uh, legging, yeah. Leggings, yeah. Uh, with the... Uh, how to say? I print. No print. It's a hot. For yoga? Sorry? For sports? For yoga? You know, no, yoga pants? Yeah, yeah, for yeah, 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 yeah. It, it makes you hot. Yeah, it makes you really hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was... Uh, it was a very big brand. So, uh, I work with one of my colleagues to manage all the you know products, products from the beginning 
from design from the design to all the you know products shipped out. So actually, the work I have been done is exactly this content. This content. So that's why I understand in the future, if you are going to build, build a great brand, you have to design on your own. You you need to understand your customer needs and then. You design your products. You lead the customer. You, I mean, you lead the market. This is, I think, this is the way for dropshippers because you are going to be to become a brand. And I think you can try to understand the concept, the concept, uh, maybe later. So, for me, I think there are seven important components for dropshipping supply chain management. The first one is product sourcing, right? Product sourcing. You have a product. You want to find it on, um, you know, maybe from different supplier or different factory, or you know, find the real source of the factory, so you can cut your price, you know, down. So product sourcing and bulk inventory storage and quality inspection, private label and white label your products. For us, there is a you know, MOQ required and brand packages and the Shopify for integrations. With the Shopify full integration, you can track all the orders. You can track all the orders. This, I work with one of my close friends. We work in the same company. Um, have been about three years. We work together and we are close friends. I think some of you might have heard of him. Andy, you know? You yeah, know I know CJ Drop. Yeah, CJ, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. You yeah. Work with him? Yeah. He was my colleague before, and now we are partnering. Nice. Well, I have, have a big, very big uh, applications, very nice. Yeah, I yeah. Saw it. yeah. I messaged him, no answer. Okay. <laughs> you, you know why? Because uh, CJ is very big in China. He's very big in China. I don't know that they have too many customers. So I work with uh, I work with my partner. I mean, I work with CJ, and we use his you know software. The software is amazing. I'm going to introduce a little bit later. And worldwide fulfillment. Worldwide fulfillment. So these are the seven most important components if you want to get your dropshipping business um, I mean streamlined or under control. Under control. Okay. So what you can do to boost your dropshipping business? Oh, I forget one topic. It's about sourcing from 1680. Do you want to do you want to see the link I sent you, or do you want me to show here? You can show it. Okay. The the very first is the correct one. Okay. I got the best one. Okay. So you see, you see this. Okay. Actually, you can turn sixteen eighty eight. This is the first step. You can turn sixteen eighty eight in your local language, just by setting in some certain area. I think it's uh, oh this this screen is not for you click there are three dots you click it and you can set it, you you can do the settings and you can choose every time translate the language right and but this is the Google translate uh, yeah it's Google translation yeah it's a, it's direct translation but it's not you know one hundred percent. But I think really? you need to sign in because I think the sites sometimes block you to mm -hmm. search. You need to, so you need to sign if you, in. If you want to sign in, you need a Alipay account. Yeah. If you need a, if you want to register a Alipay account, I think so that is not going to block you because I used to spend a lot of time in this site. Sometimes <coughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's block you. It's, you cannot get search. Uh, or you can use VPN to switch the IP to China. Yeah, this is a yeah. To switch uh, to change your IP to China will make your speed 
maybe faster because we usually use VPN from America to use Google. Yeah, it's just the same. But what's the difference between this and AliExpress? Here you see you find products that you don't find in AliExpress. Uh, yeah, this is one point. Yes, 1688 offers even more. You know, uh, it's like this. Every factory in China, they are in the first base of the supply chain, right? It's the first base. It's the basic base. Yes. And when they have new products, or they cannot sell out, they will distribute to different sellers on the re on the you know physical store or to the sellers on 1688. So when they have new product. They take picture and upload it. Yeah. So it's a it's a second base. What sixty eight? Yeah. Yeah, se second base. Nice. Yeah, second base of the you know the Chinese um how to say supply chain. Supply chain. Yeah. In the second base. And AliExpress so, like yeah. what base is uh, the last AliExpress is like the third, the third one. The third one. Yeah. Taobao is the third base. Taobao and AliExpress they are similar. AliExpress is only for worldwide. Taobao is only for China. And Tmall? Tmall? Tmall. Okay. Tmall is like B2C. It's the yeah. same like Amazon. But Amazon, they have, you know, they have individual and professional account, right? So uh, Tmall is like professional account. Yeah, equivalent to... For brands. Yeah, yeah. yeah for brands, for business. Yeah. So, uh, 1688 it's the second phase of the supply chain and then on it it's you know AliExpress. So if you learn how to source products from 1688 you will find some new ideas, new products and it will be very simple. You find these products, you just send us a link and we will communicate with the manufacturer and we'll get the product. Yeah, that's it. What about uh, Alibaba? Okay, Alibaba, very good question. Alibaba is, um, I think it's under, it's the next AliExpress, but they are different target. AliExpress is for retail, retailers, consumers. So it's not for door shippers, right? It's for consumers. But you drop shipper find the gap between, you know, uh, between the end consumer. You know, this is a perfect gap, you find it. So you dropped it from AliExpress. So it became B to B to C platform. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, something maybe the founder of AliExpress they did they never <laughs> knew it before they started. Yeah. It was designed to be a B to C platform for worldwide consumers like Amazon. Yeah, like Amazon. So uh, Alibaba.com it's a B to B platform. Yeah, it's in Bali. Yeah. 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 So. If you have a customized product, you don't source it from AliExpress. You source it from Alibaba. It's what I did. I have a customized mm -hmm. and I said I didn't find the Chinese in Alibaba and I yeah. with them. Uh, Actually, everybody yeah. does everything. If we have a lot of suppliers, like we work with the same supplier for two years, mm -hmm. found her find in AliExpress, she does everything for us. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, you can, you can. If you have communicated with Center on Express and Center on Alibaba, you will find the huge differences in communication, mm -hmm. right? Right. The communication with Alibaba sellers are better yeah, than Aliexpress. Yeah. It's not because of their factory. It's because, you know, okay, let me explain the inside information. Of Alibaba sellers and AliExpress sellers. For example, uh, Debbie knows that I used to work in a company with sell on Alibaba. So, uh, Alibaba, if I recruit sellers on Alibaba, first they need very good English. If they cannot speak well English, no. Yeah. They need to know product. They need to know how the, uh, you know, how to, how the product is made, the process, the procedure of a product, how it is made, because they need to explain this to customer. But for uh, sellers on AliExpress, they don't need this. They just know how to use translation tools, that's yeah. fine. Because they just co you know, copy and paste and translate it on AliExpress. So when you're reading the title you know, on AliExpress, it's not 
you know, it's not always reading, you know, the keywords. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, you, you know, it's a lot, a lot of keywords. Yeah. Yes. It's because they just copy, you know, uh, the topic, the title on 1680 and past, and then and they, they put on Express title. This is how, you know, how to say, the, uh, basically, in general, in general speaking, the sellers on Express, they cannot speak very good English, and they don't know too much about how this product is made. What they do is just sell, sell, you place order with ship, you place order with ship. So it's a simple. So if you if you try to communicate with a seller on Aliexpress, they will ignore a message. This happens very often, right? Because they don't rely on replying message to get order. As long as the customer sees the link, they click and buy it. But for uh, for sellers on Alibaba, they are very much rely on replying message, replying by email, by yes, Skype, yes, yes, by Ali one one, right? To you know to communicate with you, to understand your needs, to analysis your your your, your needs, and then to offer you solution, to make quotation by Excel, by PDF. Yeah. So this is the differences between uh, Alibaba and Aliexpress. So, yeah. Is, is Alibaba is the best B two B solution and so on? Alibaba, Alibaba is the business. B two B. I asked about B two B. Standard B two B. Okay. Is this the the best uh, source to get uh, information about B two B, or is there another website uh, that? Uh, uh, the Chinese user. Okay, I got your question. Chinese user also. Yeah. So if if let me answer your question, there is, uh, don't ever try to find the best, because there is always better. Maybe on this side, or maybe on that side. So if you are trying to you know to compare different prices from different supplier, then Alibaba is a perfect place. You need to find you know one, two, three, four, maybe compare the prices. It's, a, it's, it's very good for you, it's very helpful for you. But from China, uh, you know, you always get what you pay. For example, like this product, this product, if it sells $1.7, right? This is the average market price. So if you can get it at 1.8, it makes sense. You get it at 1.6, it also makes sense. But if you're trying to get it at, at 0 0.9, okay, maybe they will offer you this price, but you get a different product. Compromise on quality. Yeah, there is a compromise on quality. Yeah. I asked about the alternative. Uh, you said that 16.8 is a better uh, platform yeah. than uh, AliExpress. And I asked if there is a better platform to B2B mm -hmm. than uh, Alibaba. Is there another B2B website that is uh, better to source from than Alibaba? Okay. If you want to source products, the best way is you work with someone like us. For example, you learn, you try to learn how to source products from 1688. You find it, you send us a link, and we communicate with the supplier, and we get it for you. And you can give and you can give us better price than I express or uh, usually I think so. Yeah, usually but it based on you know because every company they have advantage and disadvantage. Yeah. Because I used to work with Andy and I had a product that I used to sell very well and the average price that I get from AliExpress was like like twenty four, twenty five. <coughs> the first time that I was working with Andy they gave me like eighteen, nineteen dollars, and my profit was better. But yeah. Yeah. eventually, a lot of customers are was complaining about the item. It was this electric item, and it was smoking, smoking. So I just want to make sure that I will not. If you will give me a better price, mm -hmm. but it will be with a better quality as well, right? Okay. Uh, this is actually this is a, this is part of how you conduct service. So for me, uh, the service we are offering is like this. Uh, first, we make a collision. You think the collision is okay? Okay, let's go ahead. We go ahead, we buy a sample. We take video, right? Make sure everything 
this product is what I want. So there is a confirmation. Without this confirmation, I think there might be you know compromise because even the same picture, all the same distribution, you will find different you know different sellers, different price. Maybe the price there is a huge differences. Yeah. So, so you so you get the products to your factory, you see them, and then you ship them. If you if if for example I want to source with you, yeah, I'm another factory. Mm -hmm. So you order one thousand pieces, they come to you, you you check them, and then this or the factory already send it. We receive the fact we receive the product first in our warehouse. It's very important. Yeah, and if there is bad products, we return them. We yeah, but this is for the, the beginning. What happens in the middle of the supply, like when I'm starting to sell and everything is good, then you can forget about it, and the the, cup, the factory can change the quality in the middle of the way. Uh, and it's come to five so, oh, one thousand pieces. Order comes to him. Not only the beginning. Well, I'm talking about, that. about the quality check. Yeah. What, if it, only for the first time, for the first uh, bulk you, you buy for me, yeah. or is it ongoing the quality check? Big the quantity. Product, we okay. About. Every time when the product comes, there is quality check. Okay. Yeah, there is quality check. Because the first thing we do is confirm the quality. Yeah, yeah we confirm the quality. If uh, sometimes the factory do this, they change the material or mm -hmm. there is something. Yeah. You know, minor changes, they don't tell us. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Yeah, it happens. But every time when the product comes in, we will do a quality inspection. Yeah, because um, my my ideology is like this: if we are partner together, if your business can grow, I grow mine. Yeah. So the way I grow my business is to grow your force. So in this way, that's why you know two years ago I have none. Is a real customer. Now I have, I think about 20 or something, 20 customers. So just in about two years. Two years. Maybe now we're going to have more. I have another <laughs> uh, let's, I let's, so. let's wait with the question until the end. Just right. finish the presentation. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's that? 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 Actually, it's very simple. Um, oh, so okay for the how to source products from segmented. I think I will send Debbie a link. I send Debbie a link. So. You can ask the link from there. You will know how to source the product from Cincinnati. I think it is very beneficial for you to understand the process. So since Debbie has very limited minutes, I will hurry up uh, because it's just a half. <laughs> yeah. So the most used channels that we use to have our customer source products, the first one is CTNA, it's number one. The second one is eugo.com. You can check this website when you have time. And you market for consumer products and Shenzhen market for uh, for electronic products. Shenzhen for electronic products. And a direct factory or manufacturing for big bottoms. If you have big bottom, we find directly, you know, manufacturers to customize. Yeah. So if you have, you know, like 20 or 200, or if, if it cannot meet the, you know, the MOP we buy from uh, 16 or you go or, you know, the market. But I can send, send you a sample, for example? You don't need, you just send, send me the AliExpress link. Yeah, fine. but if I want to make something different from AliExpress, uh -huh. I have a designer, for example, and I yeah. want to send you a sample, yeah. then you can make, make it? Yeah. If you have a quantity, no problem. Yeah, because every every factory they require a MOQ. What is the minimum? It depends. You already one thousand, but it it based uh, you know it's different from product. No, but well, you have to follow the same rules that you have. No, but you have to זה מאוד 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 מא
four uh, Chinese words, Chinese uh, sites. I think I think we have we have uh, Charles, yeah, Alibaba, Made in China, and Aliexpress, and Gage, Gage, Taobao, Tmall, and JT.com, and CMA, and Google. So similar, they are all similar. I think I covered this just now. And just to add DHA, DHK or something. Yeah. Uh, this is a map of China, but this map is based on specified products or category they produce. So I'm here. I'm here in Zhejiang province. Yeah, in Zhejiang province. So in Zhejiang province, produce you know all kinds of small commodities, consumer products like you know. Uh, stationery, artificial flower, jewelry, or small, you know, uh, white electronic products. Yeah. In Shenzhen, this place, mainly for electronic products. Electronic products. So this is a map. I can send you Debbie. I can send Debbie. If you need, you can ask. If we have more time, I can, you know, cover even more. We have them. Yeah. yeah, we can stay. Yeah. We can stay. Yeah. Uh, the quality inspection. So, uh, when the product comes to our warehouse, we have a quality check. And the process will be like this. Will be like this. First, we buy, uh, you can submit the sourcing request. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, I can send you a link and you can register first. After after registration, um, you can submit sourcing request. You, you just input the you know address link will you find and we find from uh, you know sixteen eighty, and then if everything is okay, you accept price. You buy a sample for, from supplier, and we take a video for you and confirm it. And then if you confirm, we buy products in bulk, and then when the products come in, there is a Inspection. Okay, this is the process. Okay, I, I know we are short in time, but uh, yeah. you can ask a few questions. I think it's important. Yeah. yeah. So the whole thing about dropshipping is that we avoid spending money on inventory, taking yeah. the risk. Yeah. On inventory. So yeah. you guys take the risk for us. Uh, okay, there is a solution. It's, uh, I, I mean, we can find a balance between you don't want to be inventory and we don't want to take too much risk. We can find a balance. Yeah. There is a compromising. As you, as you said, it was very right that every product has a life cycle. Yeah. And uh, maybe I want to start working with you, but maybe my winner is at the end of his life cycle, and yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. And I say I buy this and that, I sell like, this and that quantity every day. Yeah. Or you, or you, you work yeah. very lean, like uh, you restock every few days yeah. instead of keeping huge quantity. Yeah, that's that, it. That's it. Yeah, I can explain you person. Yeah, I will explain you. So maybe okay. Okay, five or so. ten minutes later. Okay. Okay. The next is brand branding solution. So branding solution is like this. We can put the insert part. It's very you know. Yeah. yeah. I think all of you may know this, right? Yeah. And the express bag with your logo on it. And this is a this is a one of the sample. I mean. A you can design packaging or only uh, or you only put. Like just if I have a specially okay. designed for pay. if you have quantity, okay. Yeah, if I have if you have quantity, mm -hmm. we can design. We can design. Yeah. Okay. You have the source to design specially packaging. Yeah. We can according design to our request. Request. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a quantity, I mean it cannot reach the MOQ, we have to buy you know from the factory. <coughs> the existing stock. Or put a white white label. White label is just a white sticker with a brand. Yeah. Yeah. All about the money. And the full customization of your products, this is just simple. I have a customer sells, uh, you know, uh, sunglasses. Of course, this is not his brand. I just, uh, you know, make a screenshot from 16.8. So this is a brand he's selling. And we designed, you know, all the different stuff, which makes his brand looks like a, you know, a big brand. brand. So what customer receive and pack everything, check, you know, uh, unpack everything, it seems this is high quality. So high quality is not 
only because of the sunglass, it's because the rest packing. Yeah, it looks, it feels like high quality. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. uh, about the, the same thing with clothing. Yeah. Clothing. You know, you have we have the problem with sizes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you can you change the label on the back? If, for example, if it's uh, extra large in uh, Asian sizes, we need to adjust it to medium. We just we already cut the size. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just change the label. I mean, maybe ask the factory to just uh, sew a different label, perhaps mm -hmm. with the name of the brand. Yeah. Can you do that? Okay. Uh, when you ask him, can we do that? It's always based on the quantity. The Always based on the You can talk to the factory. Of course, we can. If you have the need like this, we communicate with the factory. Yeah. What's, uh, for example, the uh, kind of uh, minimum order quantities uh, for, for clothes? clothes? Not clothes, clothing. Like clothing, like, uh, shirts. shirts, jackets, coats. Uh, leather products or are they leather or not leather? Not leather. Not leather. Not leather. Not leather. Um, Polyester. Uh, just change the label on the back. Okay. So like his shirt. Okay, usually, <laughs> usually. Uh, for the shirt like this, usually maybe 200 or 500 pieces will be fine, but it depends on the factory if they make the food or not. So there is a communication process. So the way we communicate is the, like, we can, you know, you give me an evaluation of how many orders you are going to sell in this month, and we will negotiate with the factory, okay, look, we are going to sell this t-shirt. In, the, in this month, about 1,000 pieces, but I order maybe 200 pieces each time. Okay. So there is a negotiation okay. process. Yeah, Can you also yeah. guarantee the best price? Like uh, cheaper than AliExpress? Not uh, even cheaper. Okay, this is what we are trying to do always. We, we are trying to make the price competitive with the AliExpress. But sometimes it's based on the price we get from the, you know, from the factories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can tell you just because I had a product that cost me $17. Mm -hmm. And today I yeah. found that I can find it in $10. Mm -hmm. And I wow. send email to my Chinese. Mm -hmm. Suddenly she give me $10. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I work with her like almost more than one year. Yeah. Now I was very angry, you know, but what can I do, you know? So it's also important that I want to work with somebody that if you yeah. can get it cheaper, Okay, you no, know, then I can sell more. But they then don't understand this, they okay. just want to take more money. Yes, yeah. okay. Let me let me explain why you know their price uh, up and suddenly down. Uh, uh, you know, in early stage or in the middle stage of every product, everyone trying to get it is you know, ah, is up. Commodity. Yeah. When the product has some, you know, decreasing sign, it goes down. Gradually, maybe today is a price. Tomorrow is another price. And you know, I think tomorrow. I think it's the opposite. Yeah. I think <laughs> no, I think when when the people see that lots of people buy this product, mm -hmm. the factory start to produce it in a big quantity so you can get it cheaper. This is what I think happened to our product. Yeah. Well, Suddenly well, we saw a lot of well, well, food. No, he said the same. No, no. Well, when it decreased. No, no. no, no but he meant the same because when the uh, in the early stage, okay. Uh, there is like um, there is a need, big demand, okay, and then the factory start start to produce, and then there is a big quantity, okay, and people stop to buy, right? So the factory has big quantities that he has to sell, so the price is going to down. get rid of inventory. Yes. Yeah. So the price is the same.